I'm gonna mix a little bit of oneronautical reflection with chrononautical slippage. And what I mean by this is I've been reading um, a series of books about time, um, our perception of time, and also in relation to dreams. Um, in the 1920s, J.W. Dunn uh, wrote, I think it was 1927, an experiment in time or experiment with time. And he had noticed that he dreamt certain things before they happened. And what was interesting about his observations was on, in one case, he had a dream about certain things and there were numbers involved. And later on, he synced it up with his waking reality, which I call displacement disorder because it's you observe a moment, but it's not the moment that has happened yet. So it's, it's displaced, it's in disorder. And he read at this future moment a newspaper article and it happened to be very similar to his dream. And what's interesting about this is in this future moment, he just glanced at it and then I think it triggered his memory about this dream later on. Well, when he read it, he read the article wrong. He just was skimming it and he got a number wrong. Well, the number in his dream is how he read it initially in the newspaper article. So based on his observation in that future moment, it affected his dream in the past in the same way, which goes along with quantum physics, which observes that certain particles are in a virtual state until they are observed and then they settle into a certain reality and become, a, um, if they are measured in a certain way. Um, so based on the observation of J.W. Dunn in a future moment in time, it affected his dream in the past. So I'm tying this in with um, social media um, and also, the experiences that you have in life also affect your dreams. But just to consider that not only do they affect your dreams based on past experiences or what you're going through at a certain point in time or any number of observations that you make unconsciously and don't really pay attention to and then they come to the forefront in your dreams but also any information that you take in, if you're skimming an article or just glance at a, at a photo, it does affect dreams in some way. And not only does it affect a present dream, I'm talking about maybe a past, something that you read, but also that you will read. And when we dream, we forget about our bodies and we, it's, inner space travel for the most part and our rational mind parts of our mind um, is relaxed is and that opens up certain other possibilities that during waking reality for a lot of people are dismissed so our mind becomes even more open during dreams and it breaks down those barriers of, for example, perceiving time in a certain way or perceiving space in a certain way. So we can time travel in our dreams. It happens all the time. We can travel to other places no matter where they would be. It's just a matter of how you view that future based on your understanding what your mind has been exposed to for example I've talked a little bit about about how we have this toolbox of what we are aware of and what we understand 
but our mind in that present moment, if it was seen in the future, for example, is going to try its best to piece together in a certain way that future moment. And it might make absolutely no sense at the time, but then if in a future moment you're working on something, something will trigger that, that dream, for example, if you keep uh, a record of it. And so it's, it's nice to know that maybe you're stitching together, even though you have to continue working on something in the present, that your future self might actually be helping you get to that point in the future, which um, is time travel. So um, another reason why paying attention to dreams and improving your dream recall, um, and for every person it's going to be a little bit different. The conditions under which you dream may be different. So maybe if you're a creative person, you work on creative things and those spawn some, some dreams that might not have anything to do with what you're working on. Or it might be reworking what you're working on and you're editing in your dream. I've had these dreams where I'm working through maybe a chapter of a book and and, and I may not remember everything that I was editing, but I wake up and I'm like, okay, so maybe when I'm actually working on it, I go a certain way or I reword something a certain way and I had already done it in my dreams. I don't remember, but that, that gut feeling about, okay, I'm going to go with this way, that maybe that helped me to make those decisions. And I think now that we, part of us lives in cyberspace now, we understand virtual spaces in ways that a few decades ago we did not, unless you were really into, you know, imagining what it would be like, this, you know, email, you know, sending virtual letters across space, right? <laughs> or now that we have um, websites or social networks, we post things and then people respond to us, but it's not in real time, it's, it's delayed, right? Or you post something and it's the future for someone else because they don't see it until their future, even though you posted it in the past. So we have all of this asynchronicity going on, um, anachronisms going on in, in cyberspace all the time. Our virtual selves are creating spaces, our, our carving out spaces in virtual space. We're creating certain aspects of ourselves. We're leaving fingerprints or leaving data prints th throughout the internet. So we are externalizing part of our interior selves in uh, virtual spaces. So they are representations of the physical us and they manifest somewhere on a physical screen that you can touch um, or um, that you view that you hold um, even though that virtuosity is still kept within that physical device it's still still a part of us and so all of these different aspects of this time travel that we do all the time in cyberspace I think is, is helping us think about what would time travel be like and then if you're a dreamer you can also get a sense of this multi-directional time travel that we do that we splice different space times together in a scene for example where you have faces of family and friends with in a, a scene that you in a place you've never been before with weird happenings and and <laughs> and then maybe later on you're walking through a house you're like i've been here before <laughs> or you meet somebody and they remind you of somebody you already know so in your dreams you might be plugging in people's faces that you know that maybe in the future you'll meet There are different ways to conduct the double slit experiment and one of them is delayed choice which is interesting 
If you choose to switch on the detectors after the experiment, there are two patches of light. If you do not switch them on, there is an interference pattern. This is what happens even if you make the choice long after the photons have passed through. It seems almost ridiculous as if you are changing the past depending upon the choice made well after the experiment has ended. How can any decision that you take after the photons have clearly already passed through the slits possibly interfere with things that have long since happened? The only apparent conclusion is that time travel is taking place. It is as if your choice sends a signal back through time from the moment that you make this decision, alerting the photons as they pass through the slits to let them then decide what they must do. Or to be more exact, while our method of observation dictates the outcome of the experiment, it does so independently of time. We can choose which way to view the result before or after we have conducted the test. The result will still be the same. So when you're having a dream and you remember it, um, you might be reworking something that you experienced. You might be seeing through someone else's eyes, if it's remote viewing, somebody else is present. Or you might also be seeing a future of your own, a future that you observe. It might not be exactly how things play out based on other people's observations, but it's how you experience it. So you do try time travel, perhaps. What's interesting, I'm reading also Breaking the Time Barrier. It goes through the different history of humanity, wondering about time. And also this race to mm, break the time barrier, to build a time machine. And it goes through these different mechanisms and apparatuses or even thought experiments that go through the possibilities of how time travel happens or could possibly how time could be manipulated using a time machine for example. One interesting apparatus that came up I think it was in the 1950s was called a noctovisor or a chronovisor one of those two I can't remember exactly but pretty much it's it's to see heat signatures. Well what's interesting about this is that it not only registered heat signatures based on what was there, but what had been there. So it was viewing into the past. And it also links up with, the author links this up with what telescopes do. We are always looking into the past, the, the far reaches of the past. Another interesting part of the book of Breaking the Time Barrier is it goes to the history of these people who have done experiments with time, um, including Nikola Tesla and Einstein, and I found it interesting. So all those creative people out there, um, th this you'll find interesting is um, Einstein would go through and have story reels in his head to try to figure out the scientific concepts and theories that he was working. I also th found it fascinating that physicists were thinking up these high gravity wells um, about how depressions in space-time could happen and how that warpage could be a way to time travel. And 20 years earlier, think about it, high gravity wells, if you use acronyms, it's HG Wells. So he had written about time travel in the time machine um, 20 years before physicists were working through these concepts and observing certain things um, about space and, and nature. And, and um, so there's this interplay between um, people who create that, okay, come up with their imagination and work through logistics or who are fascinated by science, um, H.G. Wells. Was, was interested. You can imagine these, these creative people were interested in the science behind what was going on during their time and then working through maybe certain things that could be impossible. Also, Einstein, when he was working through his, his theory of uh, special relativity and also uh, quantum physics, 
he, what was always problematic for him about, um, for example, one particle affecting another particle instantaneously across any distance and pretty much breaking um, light speed. Um, one of the proposals for how that happens is that there are other dimensions and kind of like wormholes, the Einstein um, roads and bridges, that you could travel really quickly to another point in space-time by using another hidden dimension that we can't see. So you can imagine, and I, a few, few days after reading that, or maybe the next day after reading that, um, I can't remember what triggered it, but Jack, Jack Attack by Pixar, um, how he, he, he pops in and out of existence in this house with this poor babysitter that is, is watching him. Um, and so maybe he's, you know, popping, he's using hidden dimensions, you know, popping in and out where, you know, the babysitter, when she's observing it, it's like he disappeared, where did he go? You know, in that present time, he's gone. But then all of a sudden he winks back into the present. Uh, so where, where did Jack Jack go? You know, he could have gone in the future, he could have gone in the past, or some version of the, the future or the past. So there is that um, possibility. And I'm not entirely way through the book, but those are some observations about the book, about the possibilities of how we can time travel. There are always new mechanisms, new tools that we can use to build time machines. But it's interesting that throughout human history, the most advanced mechanism or tool is our minds. How we can think up the possibilities, even though if at the time science says it's impossible. So just imagine that. What can you imagine? And even if current science doesn't say it's possible, it doesn't mean that in the future it might not be. But um, bending these rules of existing um, known laws of science, um, and that uh, we've seen throughout history that has happened, we've had to revise the science code, right? We've had to, to revise how we understand nature and things that are observable and the cosmos, things that currently can't see and then all of a sudden we can see more, um, whether it's microscopic or very large, massive um, um, space objects. I'm a very visual person, so also sometimes I have the things that I bring back from dreams deal with directions, like point of view. I always try to, if I draw out or describe my dream, my line of sight from, from what I see. And based on that line of sight, um, I call it a, a neuronautical perspective where you're doing a 360 around and up and down so you're like in a sphere you're kind of whirling around right and in a gyroscope way and so in your dreams if you become aware for example or if you also I don't know I think if you if you do affirmations about I you know before you fall asleep saying I'm going to view my dreams in as many perspectives. I'm going to pick up the parts of my dream that I think are important. And for me, sometimes in dreams, I pick out shapes in different colors. And I focus in and describe in minute detail certain things that may not, in maybe real life, you would pay attention to the different colors and shades of a flower, for example. But then, because you described or noticed something in such detail with the different shapes and how they were put together, if it is a future moment in time, you see an image, and if you keep a record of your dreams, it'll trigger some, just that one part of whatever you're seeing or experiencing, it could be senses too, that you had that dream at a different point in time. Um, and I think people who experiment with time should 
if they're curious about time, wondering about whether you can see the future, which a lot of people prefer versus the past. I would love to travel into the past. I love past. I haven't really gone into the past. Maybe reworking the past in different ways, in different scenarios. But um, I think that would be fascinating.